Let's go ahead and modify our resolve program now to run asynchronously. So what we'll do is go in and just go ahead and quickly comment out our synchronous implementation and go ahead and start to implement now our asynchronous process. So the, the, the way you do that is by calling the resolve async method instead of just the resolve method. So we're going to go in here and it looks very similar for the most part and then I need to pass in a new um, peer name and that will be an unsecured peer name just like that and the only other thing that I have to add is this user state so if I were to be running multiple asynchronous resolutions I need a way to keep track of which one actually completes and what I need to do with that particular resolution request um, I'm only you know doing one so I, I'm not going to implement all the stuff that needs to, to be done to do all that tracking so I'm just going to pass in a GUID this could be your first step and then you would maybe you know want a list of you know GUIDs to know who's doing what or whatever I mean there's different ways to do that I'll leave that up to you to kind of go and research the, the best method to keep track of that you'd probably really want to you know insert kind of a manager into this whole process if that's what you were going to do but this is going to work for us for now so once that fires, that fires off asynchronously and my application would continue to run until it hit the, the read line and hold the window open. And what I need to worry about then is, is okay, how do I know when it's done? How do I display my results? Well, as you probably already know, uh, this asynchronous method will have some events that will get fired. There is an async cancel. So if you have a long running uh, resolution and you'd like to be able to cancel it, you can always call the res resolve as async cancel method. You would need to pass in that user state. So I'd pass in the same GUID that I'd used to start the initial resolution that would cancel that particular one. But we're not going to do that. We're just going to worry about these two events. The one we're most interested in is the resolve completed. This is what happens when the resolution is complete or has an error. Um, we can also track the resolve progress changed. In the actual download, you can see me wire this up real quickly. It just fires off periodically and shows the percentage of work that's been completed because I have such a, a small number of records that I'm resolving and I'm kind of a relatively quick network here because my all my peers are kind of sitting on the same network. Um, I just that event fires once for me and says I'm at zero percent, and the next thing you know, I'm done. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time working on that. The ideas are basically the same as handling the resolve completed. So we're just going to wire that up just like you would um, normally. And once we get into this, we get the resolve completed event args passed in. And this tells us the state of the request. So one thing I want to make sure is I'm going to make sure that canceled is not set equal to true. Because if it was canceled, then I know I'm not going to have any results. The other thing I can look for to make sure that I have a good return is that my error should be null. I don't want to have an error and if you want to really really double check everything you can go in and make sure that your peer name record collection does not equal null okay so basically did I have a was I canceled no did I have an error hopefully not and then do I have records hopefully I do and so once I get into here we'll just say hey records are equal to the peer name record collection that's a, is associated with the completion event we're gonna go ahead and display my results and then what we're going to do is I don't want to come and hit that press enter to exit read line break and then have all the results printed off after that. I like kind of having an update for the person. So I'm going to actually have a boolean and this is total brute force, much better ways to do this. I understand that. But I'm just going to have a, you know, boolean up here. So we'll come up here and say static, whoops. Static bool is running. And we are going to, oops, going to be true by default. And then right down here, what we'll do is just come into here. And we're just going to say while is running. So we're going to go into a loop. We'll have the thread sleep for a second at a time. And we're just going to console.write. And we'll just keep adding uh, periods here to this console uh, right line. And that's really that all that's involved in going to an async resolution. So let's go ahead and fire this one up. We'll start a new instance. And I still have my test client running on my other laptop over here, or my test uh, peer still registered. So let's go ahead and do a test. So you can see we're resolving. You can see my periods there being added to resolve while we run the resolve async. So we could, again, this could be the UI thread in my WPF app or whatever, which is what we'll look at in a uh, subsequent screencast. And we'll just wait for the resolve to complete. 
So that time you can see that it took quite a while for my resolution to complete. You can see all the periods that added up there. And here it's found my um, other peer node. So the one sitting on the other network that was registered using the network services shell. And that's all you need to do to make your resolution be async.